now every day we we just uh, take a coffee break occasionally and call quality control. Okay, my name is Nish. Sam Saleh. Stefan Stavropoulos. Sam Fitzsimmons. And what I do? Well, I run Cafe Julia, and I've always, most of my adult life, run cafes in Sydney. I'm the owner of Hatch Espresso, which is a modern cafe slash Lebanese bakery. I'm working at Bruce Brothers as a barista. Done, I've done four cafes in my time and a couple of side projects for other people. What I do, my intention is to, to really make people's day by making great cup of coffee. Coffee has been around since before I was a child in Australia, but the form, the form we use predominantly in Australia now, the espresso, um, didn't really hit the mainstream until the 70s, maybe the 80s even, um, but it was here. It caught on from those migrant days. It's gone from being a single old Italian man behind a coffee machine in a very small space of, say, 10 seats um, that just basically sold, sold black coffee um, to other old Italian men who were getting ready to go to, fact, to work in a factory. So they'd open at three in the morning and they'd be finished work by about 10. It was out of the norm for, for somebody of my generation to go and hang. So I'd wake up stupidly early, like at 4.30 in the morning, to go and get a coffee and hang out with those guys. But I just had an affinity for it. Then that scene disappeared slowly as that generation died off or retired. So it must have been good enough that we liked it and then wanted to improve it. I mean, Australia is very multicultural, so everyone in Australia came from somewhere. So everyone bring a bit of their heritage. So Italians drink their coffee really strong and they have their, the way of drinking their espressos and uh, pretty much everything we, we have is pretty much type of Italian and cappuccinos and lattes in the sense where they bring it to Australia and we've incorporated it now as our staple, made it our own. So we've took it to the next level without dissing the Italians and their coffee. Australians do make it a bit better now. Conventional roasting is typically done in a large drum. So you have a cylindrical container which is lying on its side with both ends capped. The coffee is poured into the container and then the, the drum rotates over a gas burner underneath. And so you can think of it as kind of like a rotating frying pan. And the roast master has to control all of these various aspects and that's probably the main reason that it's very difficult to control a conventional coffee roaster and as a result the, uh, the operator has to be close to the roaster and prepared to adjust the, the heat level and the gas and the rotational speed of the roaster and so forth. It's become an identity these days that people gotta have a coffee in the morning and they really love enjoy their cup every day. So it is absolutely becoming a inseparable. Australian people love drinking uh, specialty coffee and they support locals, so that's, uh, that's what I see that the uh, Australian coffee industry is actually growing. It's a lot of boutique roasters are uh, popping up around the corner and it's good to see that's how this culture is just expanding and exploring. We have had a big rush of coffee in the last 10 years, or if not more, maybe 15 years, because we have, we source the best coffee beans from all over the world. So in Australia you can get the best coffees from Indonesia, Brazil, Guatemala, all of South America, we even have some great Kenyan coffee. So we get the best coffee in the world and our dairy is actually really good. So we have some of the best milk, highest grades of milk in the world. And 
coffee and milk complement each other and with a fast paced country now where everyone's work, 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 needs something to stimulate everyone and the best option is coffee and uh, it's just gone crazy so having a, um, a good coffee culture and a good breakfast and brunch culture in Australia opened up avenues for these little shops everywhere and now we have on every single corner a coffee shop because people can't live without it anymore. The coffee industry has changed dramatically over the last 20 or 30 years and that's driven predominantly by competition and that competition exists everywhere all the way from the farmers all the way up to the roasters. With the, I was really interested in the way coffee was made in Australia we uh, we, we try to well, have a lot of latte art and um, have a lot of pride in the way the coffee looks, not only the way it tastes. Now, air roasting is much simpler. In our design of air roasters, we use what is known as a rotating fluidized bed. So if you look at the end of the roaster, it's a triangular shape so that uh, the beans are blown up the face of the roaster, they fall back and slide down, and they constantly uh, are levitated in this rotational motion. And this does two things. It assures that the beans are exposed to the same temperature, so they all roast extremely evenly. And the second thing it does is it allows uh, for us to take the temperature of the bean in an area of the rotational bed that is unaffected by any other aspects, predominantly unaffected by the heat of the roasting air. And that way we can measure the bean temperature accurately and uh, the result means that we can produce a very consistent coffee uh, and, um, and a very clean roast because the, the vigorous air movement through the, the coffee beans blows out any dust and also chaff as it comes off the beans after the first crap. As a result of that control, we can turn it over to a computer and we don't need to stand around and push buttons and turn knobs and so forth. Industry that it's owned by locals and only few shops, not a, like big big chains, are running um, everywhere. I think that uh, the culture in Australia is more of supporting locals, sourcing locals, and uh, yeah, and serving locals. If I were to contrast the coffee between Australia and other countries. I guess the easiest country for me to contrast it with would be the United States because I'm a native from the United States. And um, I must confess, I'm terribly disappointed with the, with the coffee. So I remember when I was working in an office, I'd drink seven or eight cups a day of filtered coffee and uh, I'd never finish any of those cups. I'd go back and get a refill of a new cup and drink half of it and the rest of it would go cold on my desk. And, Whereas if you drink a higher quality beverage, a beverage that tastes much better, such as an espresso-based uh, beverage like a flat white or a cappuccino or a latte, where the taste is intense and, and very attractive, uh, you consume the coffee quickly uh, to the end. And I think that, that really tells, tells us that the human prefers that particular kind of coffee as long as it's made well. I know America has their franchise industry and Starbucks is one of the main coffee cultures as, as well. And because Australia has grown up enjoying really good coffee, to bring in a chain like a Starbucks or something like that where it's a very watered down, very milky coffee where you can barely actually taste the coffee, um, people turn away from it. They opened a while ago Starbucks in Australia but they tried to adapt the, the Starbucks style of coffee to the Australian market which was, was not accepted very well because Australia used to also sell the old Italian style espresso coffees and America were more on the milk based and frappe based. What happened in America which was a, a filter coffee um, you know, poured into a cup uh, and it's only very recently maybe in the last 10 years or so that the espresso machines caught on over there. Numerous chains have started here and failed. 
um, and I haven't quite got to the bottom of why, but but I just don't think they make coffee as well as um, a small business. For me, cafes are relationships. It's more than just the coffee, it's more than the food. It's the relationships that you're putting people together at the table.